Hey guys, welcome back to Justin Reads Romance. I'm Justin and today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in November. When I was making a list of all the books that I read in November, I was honestly really surprised about the number of books that I read in November because I feel like I didn't have any time to read during this month because of all the school that I had to do. It was just, I went like a week and a half without reading anything and that includes rereads and it was a miserable time for me. So when I counted 21 books, I was like, wait a minute, how did that happen? But of course the month kicked off with the Paranormal Romance Readathon, which really gave me a boost because I was like in reader mode at the beginning of November. And then this past weekend, I binged a ton of books and it was amazing. It was so phenomenal. So let's get started and talk about what books that I read in November. So not only did I read quite a bit for me for being in school and working full time, I mean, I'm pretty proud of myself for the 21 books that I read while doing all of that at the same time. But this month I had like the highest number of four and five star ratings that I've like ever had, maybe during the year. I don't know because I wasn't keeping track earlier in the year, like my monthly stats, but um, this is a great month, especially compared to last month where I think I only had like two or three, four and five star reads. I have so much more now and I'm so happy about that. That just like brings me so much joy because I wanna love all the books that I read. So for the month of November, I had one two and a half star book, um, three three star books, five four star books, and 12 five star books. I don't know. I don't know how that happened, but I did. I had like a really, really good reading month and I'm so happy about it. I'm gonna start with the books that I like the least and then work my way up to my favorite books of this month. My lone 2.5 star book is The Ray Kess. I originally rated it three star, but honestly, I was just really bothered by the message that it kind of sent. I was expecting a really sex positive book and what I got was something that was like sex harms and look at what harm sex has caused these two people people and these two broken people have to crawl their way up to find an inch of happiness and so it just wasn't my favorite type of book. This is the kind of book that I really don't enjoy reading and honestly I don't even know if I want to continue with the series because I feel like Scarlet Peckham is leans on like the darker aspect of things like the grittier emotions. This is grief, depression, alcoholisms. There's tons of trigger warnings for this book. So I think she deals with a lot of heavier topics. I don't necessarily if I would consider it dark or just depressing. I don't know. But yeah, I'll definitely have to see if I would consider reading the next book in the series. I like the idea of what it was trying to do. I just didn't really enjoy the way it was executed. It was an enjoyable read to me. I was frustrated, I was sad, and I left feeling pretty empty by the end of it. Moving on to three stars, my first three star is Desire Unchained. And this is the second book in the Demonica series. I had to think about it for a second. Demonica series by Laura Sion. I did read this for the Paranormal Romance Readathon. I read the first book as a Patreon exclusive review, Pleasure Unbound. And I really liked the world that it had set up. But this second one really kind of fell flat. I wasn't connecting with the characters. This is a demon and a werewolf shifter romance and sort of a second chance romance. What's interesting about this dynamic is that the hero is a type of incubus. They're called Seminus demons. They're very sexual in nature. There's a lot of rules to this world, especially according to the Seminus demon. And the heroine used to be human and actually when they first got together, she was human, but now she's a werewolf and they've been captured. Like the first chapter of the book is they're both being imprisoned and there's a big bad and all kind of family drama going on. There was a lot to juggle. I really didn't think that the romance was very central to it. I didn't get the chemistry between them and it also has like some throwaway elements of BDSM that I think was just kind of like popular during that time of romance because of Fifty Shades of Grey. It's like everyone had to throw in a little bit of BDSM to into their novels to like spice up their sex scenes and so it just no, nothing really stood out about it. It was fine. It was okay. I don't know if I would continue reading reading this series, but I don't know. We'll see. The next book I have is Lies and Lullabies. I actually forgot to go grab it and I don't want to get up and go get it. This is the first book in the Hush Notes series and each book is written by a different author. This first book is written by Serena Bowen and Serena Bowen is one of my top favorite contemporary romance authors, but for some reason this was one of my least favorite books that I've read by her, which I find really crazy because this has like rock star elements and um, single parent romance, secret baby, which I sometimes like, most of the time I do like it. Sometimes I really don't care for it. And it had a lot of elements that I usually love, but for some reason the way that this book was written, it was just like, 
okay. The pacing was a bit off to me. I didn't really get the connection between the hero and the heroine. They talked about that summer that they had spent together and then he like gave her a fake name and so when she found out she was pregnant she didn't want to contact him because he didn't even trust her with his real name and also she discovered that he was a rock star and so I understand the reservations for not contacting him. She says she would have eventually contacted him but I don't know. The way that the heroine's character was written, I'm not sure if I believe that. So I feel like a lot of the focus was on the harem being afraid that the hero would take away their daughter from her. He has access to a lot of lawyers and he can like tie her up in court. So she has a lot of reservations and I really feel like that hampered the actual romance between the hero and the heroine because there's a lot of trust issues going on during the whole book. So I felt like it dragged on too long, the bandmate of the hero. She is next in the series and I do have that second book and I haven't read it yet, but she kind of annoyed me in this one. So I don't know, I'm hesitant to pick up the next one. I know that I will, but I just wanted to take a break and step away from the series before I moved on to the next one. And then my final three star book was Her Night with a Duke. This book was okay. I was expecting a little bit more from this forbidden romance. I really didn't feel like the forbidden aspect was all that forbidden. It never felt like it was truly an obstacle. And I also had trouble with the chemistry between the hero and the heroine. In the very first chapter and in the synopsis, you find out that the heroine sleeps with the hero, an unknown man, a random stranger, one night at an inn. But when we meet or are introduced to the heroine, even though she's a widow, even though she's been traveling around the world, she seems incredibly naive. I had trouble reconciling those two parts of her, being very worldly, but then incredibly naive and trying to marry it with, especially she was very prudish, and trying to marry it with the fact that she slept with a total stranger. And it seemed out of character that she would even do that in the first place, so it kind of started off on the wrong foot for me in general. And then I had some issues with like the dialogue. It felt very formal, stilted, wooden. I was missing like the banter. I love banter in historical romance. It's It seems strange to think like historical has the best banter, but honestly, I really do think that historical sometimes has like the best banter. So yeah, I was missing that like really quippy dialogue between the hero and the heroine. It was just absent and I was struggling. Now moving on to the four star books. The first one is One Grave at a Time. I did read this for the Paranormal Romance Readathon. I love the Cat and Bone series. I know it's really called the Night Hunter series, but Cat and Bones, I love them as a couple. They are so awesome. This is like I don't know, six books in, so it's really hard to talk about plot without spoiling a lot of the world in general. It was very Halloween themed. I really enjoyed the villain. I think that his whole background was very interesting. I won't say that like the lead up until the conflict at the end was the most interesting Cat and Bones plot line. It was a lot of running from point A to point B and Cat and Bones really being on the defensive the whole time. But there's another character, a human character, that enters on the scene and he's definitely butting heads with Cat and Bones and it is awesome. And I have one more book in the series until it's done, until I'm finished with the Night Hunter series and I can move on to the Night Hunter series with Vlad. But I don't know if he'll continue to be like this villain or if he'll be like just the villain of the final book in the series. So I have got to finish the series before the year has ended. That's like a goal that I need to set for myself. Next, I have Love Bites by Cynthia St. Alban. I did read this book for the podcast. This was a suggestion by Juliet. And this series, I will warn you that there's not an HEA at the beginning of this book because it is a trilogy and it actually might be going on longer than three books. I think origin it was originally planned as a trilogy, but I think it's gonna go on for longer. Juliet's read the first two. I don't know if she's read the third one in the series, but the romance does drag on throughout the series. The heroine is down on her luck. She's really struggling. She kind of fibs a little bit on her resume to get a position at this art gallery. And her boss is very interesting and he employs some real characters in his art gallery. The heroine starts noticing like some strange things about Abernathy and it's a really fun read. There's a lot that goes on and I feel like at the end it was a little bit info dumpy but I really did enjoy the series. There's only one minor thing that bothered me and I can't say it because it is a total spoiler but something bothered me. Something that involved the heroine and a cop and that's all I'm gonna say and it annoyed me. Next, I read The Gift by Rilsey Adams. This is the first book in her Falling Like a Johnson series, 
And let me tell you, Rilsey Adams is a new author discovery for me. I really love her writing. I read Go Deep and then I immediately wanted to go read some of her backlist, so I started with her Falling Like a Johnson series. This book is very interesting, has a very interesting scenario. So it starts off with the hero losing his wife and he is deep in grief and he blames her best friend for her death. There is a something that went down and he blames the best friend. And then he finds out that the best friend, her best friend is pregnant with their baby, his and his wife's baby. They had struggled to conceive and the best friend had offered to be their surrogate and horrible timing. And also it just wasn't a good scenario because not only did he blame the best friend for his wife's death, he didn't even like her in the first place. They never got along. So right off the bat, I was like, how is this going to work? But Rosie Adams, she does not rush this romance because it is a romance between the widower and his wife's best friend. And also the person who's carrying his child. And it's like, how is this going to work? And I don't know how real Z Adams does it, but it felt so real. I think a lot of it has to do with she did not rush the story. She let time like progress naturally. They didn't just fall in love <laughs> within like a month or two. It was a very gradual thing and it was very real. He felt guilt and they had like a couple little missteps. It was so beautiful. I just really loved it. Not as much as Go Deep, but I really did enjoy it and I do want to continue with this series. Next I have Love is a Rogue by Lenora Bell. This is the first book that I've ever read by Lenora Bell. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling with like the trope kind of flip-flop because the heroine is actually beastly Beatrice. Beatrice has some nerve damage to her face so her face is a little bit droopy on one side and the hero is like a total like playboy, flirtatious, and he gets under Beatrice's skin so bad when she is just trying to concentrate and relax at her brother's country estate. She's trying to write a dictionary and he is just messing with her because she can hear him throughout the window, like flirting with all the maids and he's just so nice and likable and it drives her bonkers. They meet again in London when she is forced to go back for this season because her mother is determined that Beatrice is going to make an advantageous match and all she wants to do is sit at home with her books. She wants to live in the country. She does not want to be part of the ton. But she does make a deal with her mother that if she cooperates and if she actually puts in some effort to being like nice and conversational and dancing and not like purposefully flubbing all of her interactions with potential suitors, then her mother agreed that she can keep the books in this bookshop that she was willed from her aunt who recently passed away. There's lots of other stuff going on. It is honestly so much fun. I really loved it. The inn was a little too neat and tidy, but honestly, the rest of the book was so phenomenal. I just absolutely loved it. I cannot wait to read more by Lenora Bell. And then the last four star is Riven Night by Debney Perry. This is the second book in the 10 Gypsy series. This is a very interesting MC romance because MC romance is not like one of my favorite tropes in romance. I don't really enjoy it. It can kind of get repetitive and it could start to all blend in with Sons of Anarchy, and so I just get bored with them. But anyway, I really liked the first book in the series, and so I picked up the second one. The second one was a lot different. I found that the pacing is a little bit slower. The characters were very different. They had a very different dynamic than the first couple, but I like that. I like to switch it up. I don't want every single couple to progress the same, to have the same personality as the last one. They definitely had a different dynamic. Both the hero and the heroine had things in their past that they were dealing with and it really kind of hampered their initial chemistry and getting to know each other. I did find that a little bit of a struggle, but once they started actually talking to each other and getting to know each other, because this is a marriage of convenience romance. So they're hitched from the very first chapter, which I found it very interesting that I, that it was such a slow pace because they were always in each other's space. They were living together to keep up the pretense of being married, but I just feel like it took a little bit too long for them to start having conversations about their feelings. I was really glad that we had a thread that was kind of lingering from the first book tied up in this book. And I'm excited for the next book in the series. It's going to be so great. And now the rest are all five star reads. I'm so happy about this. Like this honestly made me giddy looking at how many books that I was like, these books made me so happy. It's just, 
So amazing. The first book is Mating the Hunters by Talia Hibbert. I did read this for the Paranormal Romance Readathon. This is a novella and I think she self-published these books. I hope that she goes back to go write these. I don't think she has written any other paranormal series besides this one, but this was such a delight, I swear. Talia Hibbert is just gold. I, there has never been a miss with me for her books. She is just that good. The chemistry between these characters is so amazing. It was kind of a forbidden love, forbidden romance and enemies to lovers romance kind of mixed into one. The heroine is a werewolf like huntress and the hero is a werewolf and he has mated with her. Like he knows that she is his fated mate and she thinks werewolves are all just like horrible. They're killers. They prey on humans. He thinks he's being all inconspicuous going into her place of work. She works at a coffee shop that her family owns. She pegs him right away but does not let it on. She just like lets him flirt with her and makes a plan to like go along with this flirtation to prove herself to her family that yes I can be an, a huntress. It's just so fun and so funny because the heroine is like literally trying to kill the hero and the entire time <laughs> that she is trying to do this. He is just like, oh my God, I, I love her. She is so fierce. She is so amazing. She is a wonderful mate. I'm so excited that I have such a fierce mate. It's just, it's, it's gold. It's gold. I love it. I love it. I have nothing bad to say about it. Then I have McCreeve, another paranormal romance readathon book. This book was so good. I think it might be my favorite one in the Immortals After Dark series. I'm also almost done with the series. I have like just a few more books left until I'm caught up. The hero is a werewolf and he has like some PTSD because he was like tortured. There's a whole set of books that was set on this torture island place and he was on there. So he is dealing with some terrible stuff. The heroine is the daughter of the man who is in charge of all the torture. And when he figures out that this is his fated mate, it could have gone so wrong, but he doesn't care. He's just like my mate. And it's so sweet. I love the way that they interact and they fall in love. But about the midway point, there is a point of conflict that I was just like, oh my God. It just, I loved everything about this book. I love the way it flowed and ugh, I love McCreeve so much. The Hotter and Hotter Twins, man. Ugh, can't wait for Monroe's book. Then the last book that I have for my Paranormal Romance Readathon was Raven Song. This is the second book in the Green Creek series. The first book is Wolf Song, which I've raved about. We have a podcast episode on Wolf Song. It is just honestly so amazing. TJ Klune, one of my new favorite authors. He writes the most beautifully character-driven MM romances I've ever read in my life. They're amazing. So the heroes of this book are Mark and Gordo, and we do see them in Wolf Song. This is a second chance romance. I didn't quite love it as much as Wolf Song, but I still gave it five stars because it was just so good. So, so good. It was heartbreaking, a little bit more angsty than Wolf Song, but Mark and Gordo, man, they, they really have to fight for their romance. And I just loved it. I, if you've never read TJ Klune before, and if you've never read Wolf Song, this series of four, I encourage you to read it because it is amazing and I do plan on going to read a lot more TJ Klune after this. I know that a lot of people love The House on the Cerulean Sea so I want to read that one and yeah I'm in love with the series. Next we have Heart Song which is my favorite book in the series. I don't want to say too much about it because this book is so unique. I will say that when I started reading this book we were in the point of view of a character. I really didn't expect to be in his point of view because each book is told through a single point of view. And I thought I knew it was happening. I thought I did. I was like, oh my goodness, this is so interesting. Yeah, cool, mm, glimpse of this. Information, we find out so many things in this book that I, it just like broke my heart, made me smile, made me laugh, and it was just so good. But then I found out that there was a missing piece to this perspective, and once that little twist came, I was like, blown away. I don't want to hype it up too much, but I can't help it. I honestly can't. This book was so good. I love it. Oh my God. They're my favorite couple. I, I, I love them. I love them. And of course we have like some overarching um, things going on. We do see lots of Ox and Joe who are the main characters of Wolf Song. Those characters continue to develop and I can't say enough. Cannot say enough. Heart Song, Heart Song, Heart Song was the best. But then we have Brother Song, which is the last book in the series. I think that it wrapped up the series so nicely. And each couple in the series 
is so unique. Their love story is, plays out so differently. There's completely different personalities in play, completely different scenarios that they're in, and wow. I mean, I, I cannot say who the heroes are of this one because it definitely is a spoiler for the earlier books, but it's unique, it's amazing, it's beautiful. I love the way that TJ Klune writes. So, so, so good. Next I have Falling Into Bed with the Duke by Lorraine Heath and it's so crazy because every time I talk about like my favorite historical romance authors, I don't know why I forget to mention Lorraine Heath because she's written some of the most interesting historical romances that I've, I've read. I really love her stories and she has a humongous backlist. I've only read like four of her books but I've loved every single one of them. So this book we did for a Patreon exclusive. Our patrons voted on a book to review together and this was the one that they picked. I loved it. It's the first book in the Hellions of Havisham series. I actually read the second book before I read this book, which is very interesting. Might be doing the second one on the podcast. But the heroine of the story is really struggling because though she has a very large dowry and though it makes her a very attractive person during the season, nobody wants her for who she really is. They only want her dowry. And she's not the most beautiful thing ever. There's actually a very good description that I liked the way that Lorraine Heath handled it. The heroine says that she looks like her father and her father has very strong features, very strong brow, very dark slashing brows and intense, and an intense jawline and I really like that. I like having a heroine who isn't like a conventional beauty, but it's also very matter of fact. It's just kind of like, I'm not the most beautiful person, but like I have other aspects of me that I really love. Of course it makes her less trusting of anybody who shows an interest in her, which brings us to some very cool plot lines. She decides that she wants to experience passion. She has discovered this underground club where women go in their masks, so their identities are kept a secret, and they get to experience some carnal delights because the men of the ton who are not masked are there. And she, as soon as she walks in, she catches the interest of this duke and he is gorgeous and everybody drools over him and, she, and he s has seen something in her. I need to go back and finish the Scoundrels of St. James series. I think that that's the series that's connected to this one. Like the heroine's parents are a part of that series. I think all of Lorraine Heath's, most of Lorraine Heath's Regency romance are pretty connected. Kind of like Lisa Clayfus. Next I have My Last Duchess. I listened to this on audiobook. This is a prequel to The Wilds of Lindo Castle. I don't know why I struggle with remembering the series title, but I do. And it was so good. It was so interesting. The hero is a duke and he has eight children. His first wife died. His second wife has run off with a lover and he is ready to just kind of like wash him, wash his hands clean. He does not need any more children, but his sister convinces him, your children need a mother. So go find yourself another duchess. He's a very intense figure and he attends this ball and immediately zeroes in on this lady. Our heroine is a widow and I really like her character. She is extremely maternal. She has one child and she's super devoted to her. She doesn't want the nursemaids to do anything with her daughter. She gets up with her at 5 a.m. And when the Duke finds this out, he's just like, ah, oh, perfect. But she is resistant. And I like her reasons why she's resistant. And when she turns him down in the first place, he's like, oh, okay. Well, I'm not gonna push you on it. And so he kind of starts courting someone else. And this is the catalyst for Ophelia to reconsider and be like, wait, hold on. Maybe I was too hasty with my decision because they do have chemistry, but they also just met. This has like some really awesome snowy and wintry vibes. I think this is a perfect romance to read during this season, during December. So yeah, it's amazing. I love it. And I'm also looking forward to reading the rest of the books in the series. And the last five books in this wrap up, I binged this weekend. I finally picked up Clean Sweep this weekend by Alona Andrews. This husband and wife author duo are one of my favorite urban fantasy writers of all time. Every single series that I start by them, I'm always blown away by the amazing creativity that they continue to display. Each series is so unique and so cool. Our heroine, Dinah, is an innkeeper, and innkeepers are humans who are in charge of an inn on Earth, and Earth is known as this almost like safe haven, this neutral ground 
for the universe. So lots of aliens stop by on Earth and they have to stay at inns to keep their presence like a secret from the humans. So Dinah is the innkeeper and her connection with her inn, with her house, is very deep and she's able to manipulate physics, like the physics of the house. It should be impossible. She can like make rooms appear. There's a ton of magical elements that are very unique to innkeepers that are super fascinating and you just really have to read it because Alona Andrews, I think why they're my favorite urban fantasy writers is because I don't know of any other writers who are so skilled at world building and it doesn't feel like info dump. Everything is interesting. It's super amazing. So this is a romance that does kind of span the series, which is pretty typical for Alona Andrews. It's like you don't get an immediate HEA in the first one. You just get like a hint of their relationship in the first book and it continues on in the second one and it continues on in the third one and it builds and builds and builds. So the relationship really does feel extremely organic. So when these dead animals start appearing around the neighborhood, she immediately turns to the new werewolf in town and she just kind of like, this is your territory. You need to do something about this. And he's just like, what? Who, me? I, I am an ordinary human. <laughs> it's so amazing. This world is so cool and the aliens are so cool. I just loved it. The next book in the series, Sweep in Peace, was very interesting. Dinah is really trying to expand the inn's notoriety. She really wants it to have like a five star rating because right now her inn only has a 2.5 star rating. Her inn was dormant for a very long time. And so you kind of have to build up that reputation. So in the opportunity to be the host of like this really huge treaty comes up, she takes it, but it's a lot of work. The characters are so very interesting. We have tons of recurring characters that, that returned, Arland the vampire. He's, it's not like a normal vampire. And then there are some other characters that are introduced that will continue on in the series as well. Obviously I can't say too much about it without like spoiling the series and the previous book. So I'll just leave it at that. The next book in the series is One Fell Sweep and it is my favorite book in the series so far. Or maybe it's tied with the next one, but I don't know. It was just so fantastic. This plotline involves Dinah's sister, Maud, who we hear about in the first book. Dinah has two siblings who are out in space, Klaus and Maud. And this one, we actually get to meet her and it's really exciting. I absolutely love this plot. It was so much fun. So many things happen, can't spoil them. So I'm just gonna move on to the next one and like wrap these up because I really can't say too much about it without spoiling things. Sweep of the Blade is actually told through the point of view of Maud. So whereas the first three books in the series were told completely through Dinah's point of view, this one switches to Maud's point of view because we're going on an adventure with Maud and I really, really like it. So One Fell Sweep and Sweep of the Blade are my favorite books in this series. It's so good, they just kind of keep getting better. The more you find out about this world, the more interesting it becomes, the more interesting the characters become. I just love it so much. I can't say enough about it. And then the final book in the series is Sweep With Me. This is only a novella. It's not a full length novel, which I mean, they're not very long to begin with, but this one is a little bit shorter. Elona Andrews actually posts this, these books as serialized stories on their blog for free first, and then they publish the, the story as books after it. I haven't heard anything about like a date set for the next book in the series. There are some interesting, oh, I didn't even talk about that in the first one. I'm so worried about not spoiling things that I forget to mention some really cool plot lines. So one of Dinah's conflicts, uh, an overarching conflict, is that Dinah's parents were also innkeepers. And while she was away at like college or something, her parents in and they and everything in it just disappeared. Like the whole thing just disappeared and nobody knows what happened. Nobody has heard anything from her parents. Nobody has any information. So she is trying to find out some, any kind of clue, any kind of breadcrumb. Her brother Klaus is also out in space, like trying to find anything he could find on the whereabouts of his parents and what could possibly happen. Are they even still alive? So that has not been wrapped up yet. <laughs> so there has to be another book in the series. I haven't heard anything about it. They do publish this independently. This is not a series that they publish traditionally. So I know that their schedule is pretty busy. They're continuing with the Hidden Legacy series and then now they have the spinoff um, from the Kate Daniel series. The first book, Blood Air, is coming out in January. 
really excited about that. So I'm not sure when the next book in the series is coming out, but I will be ready. I will be ready and I cannot wait. All right, guys, those are all the books that I read in November. It was a really good reading week and soon I will be posting my December TBR. Fingers crossed that it goes as well as this November one did. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure that you subscribe to get notified of any future videos that I do. Thank you so much for watching and remember, life's better with a little H-E-A. Bye guys. Thank you.